Hi there. So in this series of three videos that are coming up, um, I'm going to be taking down a radial arm saw, stripping it down, kind of taking off as much as I can, and then putting it all back together to get it in good working order. Found this radial arm saw really cheap on Craigslist, and uh, so I just went about, and I put it on camera, I just stripped it all down, lubed up everything that needed lubing up. I do still have to order a couple replacement parts, but I've actually got it in pretty good working order right now. Uh, enough so that I can use it for some other projects. Um, I think, uh, you know, this is something most of you aren't ever going to do. But, you know, I thought it was, it's kind of entertaining. A lot of it's in fast forward and you can see this radial arm saw just kind of being blown apart and then put back together. It's also, uh, you know, how to kind of go about a project, you know, just taking steps, going about it methodically, reading up on what you need to read. I downloaded the owner's manual for this uh, particular saw before I started to just make sure I had a good idea of um, what all the working parts were. I obviously did it all with the saw unplugged and I took the blade off right away and you know safety is a big um, uh, emphasis on you know when you're doing projects and you're getting into something you're you know, maybe never done before. You know, I've never owned a, a radial arm saw before. I've used them a couple of times um, and I have a pretty good knowledge of how they work thanks to Norm Abram. But you do want to be safe. I mean, safety first. You know, these hands are very valuable to me and I um, don't want to miss in, go missing any fingers. So, you know, I think you might find this entertaining. You might find it interesting just in a sense of, okay, you know, how do you fix something? How do you, how do you just go about sort of figuring out what's broken, figuring out what's locked? I didn't know. I didn't know how a radial arm saw was put together and how things were attached. But just in the process of slowly, methodically figuring out which bolts uh, went to what, you know, paying close attention. I took some pictures when I needed to, um, when I was taking things apart so I could put them back together right. That's a nice trick. Anyway, um, here's the radial arm saw. I hope you enjoy it. So this is a radial arm saw that I bought off of Craigslist for $60 and even when I bought it I recognized that it had a couple of broken parts and that a couple of the mechanisms were frozen on it but I think it is amenable to repair and we're going to spend the rest of this video stripping this all down, cleaning up the frozen mechanisms, stripping off some of that rust and getting it back to its original working order. Should be fun. Okay, so we're just getting ready to strip down this radial arm saw and basically I'm going to take everything apart that will come apart and clean up any parts that need cleaning up, replace any parts that uh, need replacing and I already know there's two little parts that uh, I'm going to have to make a trip over to Sears and probably have them order for me um, but uh, they're not any uh, essential parts to the to the saw so we'll probably be able to um, make it work even until those parts come in first thing we're going to do is take off the saw guard and the blade here and uh, that'll just make it a little safer to work on the rest of it um, when you're taking off saws uh, blades on a lot of saws they're a left-handed thread so instead of your normal uh, clockwise to get them tight and counterclockwise to loosen them. It's actually the reverse of that and you'll turn it clockwise to uh, get it loose. So let's go ahead and take the blade guard off. And this gives us access to the nut that holds the saw on. Again, that's a left-handed thread and then um, there's also a slot back here to fit a second wrench so that you can hold the motor still with a wrench while you're taking that nut off. Now I just got to find a couple of wrenches that'll fit those. So the slot in the back took a 7 8 wrench. The nut on the front, the biggest wrench I've got is a 15 16 and you can see I'm just a little short there. So this is actually probably a, a one inch nut here. And so what I'm going to do is use just an adjustable end wrench. And that one's not big enough so I'll have to go get another one. So here you can 
see I've taken the saw blade off, and there's where the wrench fits there. And this is just the shaft of an electric motor here. So basically a radial arm saw is sort of like a skill saw. It's just been mounted on, and I've got the rip lock set over here, so it won't slide. But this is just basically the same principle as a skill saw, it's just mounted uh, on a rail system up here. And the action on that is not great, so I do want to take that apart, clean that up, and, and lubricate all that as well. And we'll just continue to take things apart. I'll try to stop uh, if there's anything interesting to focus in on, and we can have a closer look at that. But basically, I'm just going to start stripping down all these uh, nuts and bolts here. Actually, one of the things I did notice when I uh, bought the saw is that the bevel mechanism is uh, locked up. So, normally a radial arm saw can do several different functions, and uh, they're really versatile, nice saws. Uh, the most uh, sort of straightforward way a radial arm saw is used is just as a crosscut saw. So you lay your board here on the table, you have some sort of rip fence back here to square everything up, you put your board back there, and you bring your blade across, and that will cut the wood for you. Now, um, the other thing a radial arm saw can do quite easily and quite nicely is a miter cut. And a miter cut is when you swing the blade out this way. You can cut here like a 45 degree angle in a piece of wood. And most radial arm saws, and this one included, will actually go almost to 90 degrees in one of the directions. So that can give you a very uh, long, steep angle cut. And that's really handy and something a, a miter saw won't do. So a radial arm saw will do kind of everything a miter saw will do plus. Um, the other way a radio, most radial arm saws can work is if you bring the blade out. The other thing that one of the other things that's uh, locked up on this is here, and normally you'd be able to swing this blade the whole thing 90 degrees this way and use it like a table saw or kind of an upside down table saw and rip a long piece of board going this way. Uh, because I have a table saw I probably won't use that function much but I do want to um, unlock that uh, mechanism there just so I can have its full operation available to me. And then the other thing that's locked up on this saw is a bevel cut. Now a bevel cut Instead of a 90 degree cut up and down, if you bevel the blade, and so the blade's tilted at an angle and bring it across, that will uh, put a slant in the cut surfaces of whatever you're cutting. And then in addition to that, you can bevel the blade and you can miter the cut, and that's called a compound miter. So a compound miter means you've got an angle to your cut and it's beveled. There's just a little terminology for you. And this saw is quite nice. It locks in right at 90 degrees um, when you're adjusting your miter lock. And that, that's an important feature because most of the cuts you're going to make are square. And you, and you do uh, want that to find its uh, 90 degree spot fairly easily. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take this uh, motor off. And it's held on there with some uh, 3 16 inch hex nuts. But before we do that, we have to make sure we disconnect the cord from the switch up here. And so we'll get busy on that and then take the motor off and start stripping the rest of it down.
So here's just a quick update on our progress. We did manage to get the uh, motor off and it turns out those uh, hex wrenches we saw there were actually holding on the bevel plate here and that's got some notches in it to stop it a bevel of 90, 45 and 0 or maybe this is 0 and this is 90 but divine, de designed to stop at places where you typically make at angles you typically make a beveled cut you can certainly set the saw anywhere in between there um, but it wouldn't lock in like it would at those others and that was all those um, flex nuts were holding on there to get the motor off really it's just a nut uh, in the back here and as soon as I loosen that up uh, the bevel mechanism started kicking in again and here you can see the motor would just slip over that sleeve right there and then the bevel should, it should sort of turn around that cylinder to make a bevel and we'll have to just make sure that we grease that up when we put it back together so it doesn't freeze up again. Um, careful when you're taking off some of these plastic parts, there was one little tab that broke off but that won't cause any problems. Here's where that um, bevel plate, this little pin, sort of goes through here when it's locked and catches on those uh, little cutouts there. Um, I'll show you, try to show you these when I put them back together. There's just the switch and of course I've unplugged it before I started any of this. But I made sure I labeled the black and the white as it came off there uh, from, the, uh, from the motor wire there. And there's just another part of the bevel locking mechanism there. And basically it's just everything is a little bit rusty and is lacking in, in any kind of lubrication. So when we put it back together we'll get all that lubed up. So it's still not, I'm still not able to turn the saw uh, 90 degrees to uh, activate the uh, ripping position. Um, so we'll work on that next.